Um, here is again a technique that um, uh, I, I can't remember where I first came across this. Certainly it wasn't in my um, undergraduate optometry program. It was a wonderful program. The lecturers were great. I had some fantastic experiences, great friends who I'm still friendly with. Um, there were some gaps in my, in my education and, uh, and I've filled um, many of those gaps. And here's another gap filling piece of uh, or technique, modified monocular indirect ophthalmoscopy. Now, this can work without a dilated pupil, but it works much, much, much better with a dilated pupil. So this is where I, I, I would be using trypicamide, uh, usually trypicamide 1%, get a dilated, a dilated pupil. Now, um, there are head-mounted versions uh, of, of this, which are very expensive um, and quite difficult to use, I think. What I'm talking about here with the modified monocular indirect is a direct ophthalmoscope and an indirect lens. So I'm holding the lens in front of the dilated pupil and I'm looking at the image that that lens creates. The lens creates an image between me and the lens, between the practitioner and the lens. And I'm looking at that image with a direct ophthalmoscope. And I've got one, got one here. Now, I find this particularly useful on, 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 on children um, wh where I've dilated them, uh, maybe I've done a cyclegic refraction and the pupil's nice and big. Because when I look in their eye just with my direct ophthalmoscope, when I get up close, and that can sometimes be a problem, and I'm looking in the pupil, the dilated pupil, just with my direct ophthalmoscope, I'm up close and I'm one centimetre away, and they're comfortable with that, but they like to look at my light. So I get a great view of the fovea. I get a great view of the macula. But in many cases, I just simply could not get a view of the optic nerve head, the disc, because they were fixating, they were looking at my light. What's in the light? said before there was something interesting in the light what's in the light and no matter what i have asked them to do to look in the distance to get their parents to sit across the room and wave at them they i can't see the optic nerve head with my normal direct ophthalmoscope but with this technique using an indirect lens and my direct ophthalmoscope and i'm sat back at about 18 centimeters um and again, for children who are nervous or adults who are nervous, that's great because you're, you're not right in their face. Uh, you don't need a slit lamp for this, which uh, can be expensive. You sat back with your direct ophthalmoscope, focusing on the image that that indirect lens uses. And I tend to use a 20-diopter condensing lens. So this is the type of lens that's used with a head-mounted system, um, but I'm using it with my direct ophthalmoscope. Now, this doesn't give me any 3D because I'm just using one eye, but it does give me a reasonable magnification and a better field of view than when I'm looking just with my direct, when I'm very up close using just my direct. So I can see, in most cases, I can see the macula, the fovea, and the optic nerve head all in one view. I want to make sure there's no optic nerve head disease that 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 I, I you know that I, I, I might miss. So it's moderately magnified, gives enough magnification. It's not as much as when I'm just using my direct ophthalmoscope, but it's enough. But it's the wider field of view that really really helps me. And if I spot something of interest, then I can try and look with my just with my direct. Um, um, to further investigate if need be. The condensing lens is held out um, two to three, two to four, sorry, three to five centimeters in front of the eye. I'm shining my ophthalmoscope through the lens, through the dilated pupil. I might need to focus my um, ophthalmoscope to get um, a sharp image, um, but, but this, this works really well. The downside, the image is like with any indirect technique, the image is upside down and back to front. So we need to, we need to remember that and we need to think, okay, I can see a lesion here. That means it's the, it's the, you have to flip it up, flip it the right way around and flip it the, the right way around this way. So that can be tricky and I struggle with that. 
Um, but the, the, the image is upside down and, and back to front. And the magnification is about four to five times with uh, an ophthalmoscope on an emetrope, it's about 15 times. And it'll be just, just that field of view that really, 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 really helps, helps me. Um, uh, a, 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 again, um, you can, you can um, uh, get closer or you can move further back to enhance your view of that, of that image, a little bit rock, uh, rocking backwards and forwards. But I find about 18 centimetres away from the patient with the right lens focused in will give me um, a, a, a really good image. Now, I'm not saying that this is for every patient. I'm not saying the Bruckner test is for every patient. I'm not saying... Um, the, you, you know, the Mahindra is for every patient. I'm not saying this, but it's useful to know about these things. Useful perhaps to explore these things, try these things out, test them on um, people in the practice, <coughs> your, 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 your family. Um, uh, and, you know, get, get a sense of how these work. And then when you, you come across a patient, you think, oh, I really, I need to control for the accommodation. Um, I can't use drugs. The Mahindra technique, yeah, I know how to do that. Or I just can't get a view of this person's optic disc because they keep looking at my ophthalmoscope. Ah, modified mon monocular indirect. I know how to do that. You know, I'm a great believer in learning new things, trying new things, and every day trying to get that a little bit better for my own personal benefit, but also the people that I'm working with, uh, and particularly when they're uh, vulnerable people like many of my patients.